Potholes in Pennsylvania, those cavernous craters which have spread like cancer throughout the state. What can be done about them? They've taken their toll in personal injury and property damage. That's the subject of the next half hour on Good Day Pittsburgh. Good morning and welcome to Good Day Pittsburgh with Eleanor Shano White and Tom Peterson with news. Good morning, everyone. We finally made it. This is Wednesday, the last day of February, 1979. Today, we're going to be talking about highways in western Pennsylvania, our highways that look like a battlefield. We have two of the top generals with us this morning who are going to lead us into battle, and we're going to be talking with them in just a few minutes. But right now, it's time to take time out for our mid-morning news update with Tom Peterson. Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Eleanor, and good morning, everyone. Three shooting deaths reported overnight here in Allegheny County. Police in West Mifflin are looking for two men in a white car who shot to death 45-year-old Richard Striley of West Homestead last night as a man sat in his car in a parking lot in a West Mifflin shopping center. 24-year-old Harry Hamm of Natrona Heights will be arraigned today in the shooting death of 21-year-old Bruce Frank of Natrona. Frank was shot following an argument between the two men. And in McKeesport, 16-year-old Gilbert Moore of Lee Street was surprised in a burglary attempt at a neighbor's home and was shot and killed. 33-year-old Patricia Tedeschi said she heard noises in the basement, went downstairs, saw the man, and shot him. The Parkway East underpass is open this morning, but the 10th Street bypass remains closed due to huge ice chunks left over from the flooding of the past couple days. River Road on the north side is open between the 6th and 9th Street spans, and portions of the Coal Valley Road near Gervosburg remain closed this morning. The Pennsylvania Senate has taken a small step toward paving the potholes across the Commonwealth. The Senate approved a plan for $10 million for immediate pothole repairs, but some legislators and others are saying that amount won't even scratch the surface. The Senate also passed a bill to make studded tires legal again, once again in Pennsylvania. The Thornburg Bridge between Thornburg and Crafton in the Chartiers Valley will be closed again today until 3 p.m. for pothole repairs. President of the Amalgamated Transit Workers Union says Port Authority's transit trolley system is the most antiquated in the nation and could see a serious accident result. Pat is awaiting federal funding approval for its light rail transit system through the South Hills and may get word by April. A spokesman for Pat says problems can be averted if trolley drivers crawl through problem areas. Dr. Cyril Weck will take the stand today in the Common Pleas courtroom of Judge John Flaherty. The uh, hearing involves Controller Jack Lynch's attempts to get morgue records for his probe of the coroner's office and Weck's attempts to quash those subpoenas. The county commissioners are ready to make a decision Friday on that long-delayed Grant Street skyscraper plan. In competition for the county-owned land are Hillman's Grant Land Company, which plans to construct twin 50-story office towers, and Oxford Development Corporation, which wants to build this clustered skyscraper project on that same county land. The state senate has confirmed the nomination of Daniel Dunn of Pittsburgh to be new commissioner of state police in sports. West Virginia 73, Duquesne 59, and Pitt 85, George Washington 80 in first round Eastern 8 League action last night. That's the news in sports. Now back to Eleanor. Thank you, Tom. Well, everyone has a pothole story. Some of them make you want to cry. Some of them make you want to scream. Well, Newswatch reporter Carol Makita talked to Lou Romero, who shared his very special pothole story with her. As Dr. Martin Krauss, head of the new Pothole Victims of Pennsylvania, so aptly put it, everyone has their pothole story. With me is Lou Romero, pothole victim, with a not-so-unusual story. Lou, would you like to relate it to well, us? I had some uh, very interesting happenings with potholes, especially one out on the parkway. I don't know the name of the bridge exactly, but right beyond uh, the J and L, outbound on the parkway. I was tooling along there at a respectable clip and uh, I saw some small potholes which I didn't think they were that bad mm -hmm. and uh, as I crossed over those uh, felt some jarring and suddenly I look up in front of me and see this gigantic <laughs> mama pothole. I guess I must have hit her children. She had to take, she had to take it out on me and uh, avenge her children's being run over. So uh, What happened? Well. Uh, I hear clink, clink, and I look over, and the trim ring, $17 trim ring on my car, took two bounces and went over the bridge somewhere into oblivion. Oh. <laughs> we are laughing now, but this yeah. is a serious situation. I'm sure, sure you is. feel for your automobile. Have you taken any action, or would you like to? I would love to take some action. I, the roads, I've never seen roads in the, in the shape that they're in here. I've been living in Pennsylvania for 11 years, mm -hmm. and I've never seen the roads in, in, in the shape that they are now. I don't know what the problem is, and I really, be honest with you, I don't care what the problem is. I just want them fixed. I mean, I pay money, 
-hmm. and I want them fixed. I mean, I have two matching cars now. Both are missing the same side hubcap, the front driver's side hubcap. The other one I lost on Route 30. Mm -hmm. Hit the pothole, it fell off, and as I stopped to pick it up, take a look over there as I'm opening my door and I see that another motorist coming the other way, mm -hmm. stops, opens his door, picks up my hubcap, throws it in his car. I mean, that tells you something about... <laughs> you have had your share of problems on a local <laughs> road, but with motorists. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> you know, the Senate has approved some money now for, uh, for pothole patching. Mm -hmm. um, how do you feel about that? Well, that's great, but uh, what I would like to see is where the money originally, what happened to the original money, okay, mm -hmm. that was set aside for roads. I mean, we paid the taxes. We have one of the highest taxed economies in the entire uh, state of Pennsylvania. We have the worst roads. I traveled to Ohio uh, this past weekend, and as we crossed the Ohio-Pennsylvania border, obviously, we crossed that one specific uh, fault, as they call it. You know, there's a fault. <laughs> It ends at the Ohio-Pennsylvania border. And as we crossed into Ohio, the roads were perfect. We saw there was a hint of rain, a hint of snow, and uh, the salt trucks were out over there. They were out inspecting the roads, not even spreading salt. I mean, if Ohio can do it, why can't we do it? Very good question. We hope to get you some help further on in the program, so stay Great. tuned. <laughs> Thank you. We'll be right back. I guess we're laughing this morning because it hurts less than crying, and I think about this point, most of us would like to just cry, scream, help, help, and that's what we did, and we found Alan Frank, prominent Pittsburgh lawyer who has filed a class action suit against the Trumbull Corporation. Uh, Alan, you did this after just personal frustration with the pothole situation, and right now I think you could run for president and win, probably, because people just are looking for anybody who has offered them some kind of help. Now, why did you, why did you take this action? Well, it was a personal uh, frustration that, that got me after, uh, after losing two hubcaps on the small car, which weren't too expensive, mm -hmm. not too expensive being maybe 7 or $10. But then when I lost one on, uh, on our station wagon, a full-size car, uh, that was the last straw. Uh, you it's have, pretty dirty, Al. Okay, that's all right. If you just reach. Uh, you know, this is not unusual. People are walking around. Alan came in this morning. This is his hubcap. Now, Alan, you are luckier than a lot of people because you retrieved your hubcap. Well, not, that's not so. This is one of the two that remain. I just wanted you to see that, you know, I do have a, a rather expensive hubcap. The car mm -hmm. used to look nice mm -hmm. when it had that hubcap on there. Uh, and now I've got to take them off and run into the other problems of uh, rusted wheel nuts. Okay, well, I have my personal story, too. Unfortunately, if I had not Here. run out of gas this morning, I could have brought my, my tire. My car is down the road a little bit, but I have a brand new tire, radio, less than 3,000 miles on it, split wide open, took it back to the tire dealer, and he said, sorry, we can't do anything no about nice. it. It's a road hazard that caused this, so uh, you suffer the loss. You obviously, in, in uh, deciding to sue the contractor, you obviously feel that uh, it's the contractor's fault. Oh, well, at least in the first instances, uh, just as if a soda pop bottle would explode in your face, uh, you wouldn't blame it on the, the person that put the carbonation in. You wouldn't seek out uh, the actual glass manufacturer. You'd look on the bottle, and it would say the name of the bottling company. You sold it to me. If you didn't do wrong and create a defective bottle, who did? When you look at a pothole in a road <clears throat> and then examine 20 feet away, the road looks perfect. Go to somewhere else, the road looks perfect. There's a defect there. And the contractor it is primarily responsible for an obvious defect in our law. When I decided to sue, uh, I realized that, my goodness, there, there had to be thousands of people. Uh, similarly you, situated, and uh, I put together the class action. Have you heard from a lot of people? Oh, yeah. We've had hundreds of phone calls, really hundreds of phone calls, and I've never published the office phone number. Mm -hmm. uh, now, Alan, though, you, uh, you are asking that uh, pothole victims 
do a couple of specific things. You feel that it's very important that they go out and take a photograph, right? I do. I really okay, do. Okay, uh, let's go. Let's run down the list of things that you would like mm. victims in our audience right now to do, because I'm sure that uh, good everyone has a story, everyone has a, a, a situation related to a pothole. What do you want them to do? All right. Most everyone has a, a camera that you know they, they know how to operate. Get out and take any particular uh, photograph you like, as close up as you can get. That'll preserve the appearance of the matter and enable me or some other expert. Incidentally, I also have experience and a degree in engineering, mm -hmm. professional engineering. I went to Carnegie Tech. I know uh, a little bit about what I'm talking uh, about in this area. Take a close-up photograph and you might be able to see if there is a defective reinforcing rod mm -hmm. under the asphalt, which would lay the blame to the proper person. Mm -hmm. After preserving that evidence, then you've got to send me a postcard. Alan Frank Plaza Building, Pittsburgh 19, with the exact location of the pothole. In this way, I can identify exactly what contractor was responsible for that road. Okay, so you don't need a photograph of the, of the damaged tire or the oh, hubcap. No. You just want a People photograph of... People, people are honest. They really are. Uh, and if we can preserve the evidence, we'll avoid the reason why there's never been a pothole suit before. Namely, by April or May, everything's cleaned up, all the mm. potholes are filled in, and, and there's no more evidence. There's no suit left. And, and the worst is yet to come. Oh, you yeah. know, March is a bad month. Oh, yeah. Alan, we have uh, Jack Hughes uh, with us this morning, and Jack is the president of the North Hills Chamber of Commerce, and uh, he has a different idea of how we can fight the pothole problem. Uh, we'll be right back and continue our discussion. Does that look familiar, Jack? Jack Hughes is the president of the North Hills Chamber of Commerce. And uh, Jack, you have a specific problem that you are concerned with, and it's McKnight Road. And I think anyone who lives in western Pennsylvania has driven McKnight Road at one time or another. It's a death trap. Yes, it is, Eleanor. McKnight Road and Route 19, we've been reporting every week to PennDOT, mm -hmm. the hazardous areas and so forth trying to get them to do something to correct the situation. Now, if my memory serves me correct, I think it was in 1976 that PennDOT spent some, what, seven, eight million dollars? Right. Mm -hmm. What happened? Uh, that's what I'd like to know, <laughs> and a lot of other people in this part of the state. Uh, the road is completely deteriorating, and it's not quite two years. Uh, we, some people blame it on the engineering. Uh, we tend to think that it was shoddy workmanship, mm -hmm. but uh, we really don't know I, uh, what's causing it. We do know one thing, we need a new road out there. Now, you are concerned uh, primarily because what it is doing to business. You have a lot of merchants out in uh, the North Hills and McKnight Road. Has business suffered? Are people staying mm -hmm. away from that area? This is basically the reason we got into this program. Uh, at the beginning of February, or the end of January, we were getting so many inquiries and telephone calls from the business community wanting to know what they could do with the roads. Their business was dropping off, their dollar volume was, was less. And they came to us for something, some answer to this problem. So as a result, uh, we decided that it would be good to set up a pothole hotline. Mm -hmm. And in compliance with our Legislative Act 152 of last year, saying that we can uh, sue the PennDOT or the state of Pennsylvania for bodily injury, we have been sending letters to PennDOT, weekly certified mail, telling them of the situation out there and specifically uh, of certain very hazardous areas, certain potholes in certain areas of the road, so that if someone does get hurt, uh, their legal advisor can come to us and get the information to go to court with. Under Act 152, uh, you can only sue uh, if there is personal injury. Property damage doesn't Property apply. damage, no, but as I've stated before, if there was a gross amount of property damage done, for instance, someone would lose a wheel and go into one of our fast food places or one of the store shops lining uh, McKnight Road or 19, I don't think there'd be a jury in the state of Pennsylvania that would find for the state. Mm -hmm. I think they would find for the plaintiff. Jack, you, you've lived a lot around here for a long time. Um, we've joked for years about Pittsburgh being the pothole capital of the world. This year, 
something has happened. I mean, it, it is absolutely outrageous. Have you ever seen our roads as bad as they are now? No, I haven't. I've lived here all my life. Now, do you think the answer is uh, that we all band together if we scream loud enough? Do you think they're going to hear us in Harrisburg? I would hope so. Uh, we tell everyone uh, to, to write Harrisburg, to uh, write PennDOT, to form organizations similar to ours, uh, allow people to know what's going on. Uh, we've written uh, most of the people in Harrisburg, at least that are working with this end of the state. We've had no reply except from one gentleman. Um, I think that people become awfully complacent after a while. Uh, we elect our officials, they go to Harrisburg and to the federal government as far as that's concerned. Once they're there, we're paying their salaries and uh, we seem to think we're working for them, but it doesn't work that way. They're working for us. And I think people tend to forget this sometimes. Well, we want to uh, continue our discussion uh, with Alan Frank, uh, Alan the lawyer who has filed the class action suit against the contractor. I want to talk uh, in a few minutes about such things as, you know, the ban on studded snow tires. Obviously, that meant nothing because our roads are worse now than they have ever been in the past. And the um, fact that yesterday, I think, the uh, state senate appropriated some $10 million. That's just a drop in the bucket, isn't it? Well, I think maybe it's like throwing the dog a bone to shut him up. Yeah. We'll be right back. I was just looking at that picture of that pothole, and if Mork from Ork would take a, a, a look at these, I mean, he would really think he had landed on still another planet. We uh, have established the fact that uh, we have some pretty bad roads in Pennsylvania. The pothole situation is uh, its outrageous. Now, Alan, you say sue join in the class action suit against the contractor jack says let's sue pen dot you both have given our viewers phone numbers question to both of you why is this problem unique to pennsylvania why when we have uh, oh states like new york and michigan where their winters are much more severe they have the same kind of topography why don't they have the problems makes us sort of wonder if maybe you're not heading head in the right direction I, uh, I tend to agree with Jack about uh, faulty workmanship, Eleanor. Uh, it's just incredible. And when I use the word incredible, I mean non-believable that the workmanship is good. Uh, be because uh, we have the holes. It's faulty workmanship and uh, a suit against the contractors will bear that out. Alan, isn't a contractor responsible for his work? How does a highway contractor get away with something that uh, no other business could? For example, a man makes a suit. If you buy a suit and the suit falls apart, you take it back and, and you get your money back. How does a highway contractor get away with it? Uh, he, he just does his work and, uh, and leaves. There's no bond that I know of that a contractor puts up. He does mm -hmm. his work and he's done and he gets paid and goes on to the next job. Mm -hmm. You know, the thing that uh, I am fearful of is that maybe we're going to have to have even more fatalities, and you both know that I there have been not. fatalities uh, as a direct result of potholes. Yesterday, for example, there were two school bus accidents because of the potholes. Do you think that this is another situation where no one is going to listen until more lives are lost? Well, I certainly hope not, Elmer. I, uh, uh, the first week that we instigated this pothole hotline in the North Hills. Uh, we had $7,000 worth of damage reported to our chamber office. And these were just people that called us. I'm sure there were a lot of other people that didn't call. Mm -hmm. But in order to prove a point and have someone hurt, I think it's ridiculous. Uh, we can sit and look at our highways. And as I've said before, I think this is the tip of the iceberg. We wait until the, the horse gets out before we lock the door, so to speak. Uh, our bridges are falling apart. Now they're looking for money to take care of the bridges. Our locks on the rivers, they find out now, are not serviceable. And our highways are just an indication of maybe the rest of the things that are going on. Mm -hmm. 
And now our uh, lawmakers are uh, talking about an amendment to lift the ban on studded snow tires. Now that was uh, somewhat of a farce uh, to begin with. Uh, we had a ban this year on studded snow tires. We had uh, the, have the worst uh, highway conditions in, in my memory anyway. Therefore, that proves that uh, the studs really were not responsible. It's not the studs. It's not the studs. Because if it were the studs, you would see a continuous pattern. Uh, such as a rut. These potholes just develop because there's a fault, and some of them are like this Andreas fault in California. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, <laughs> they're terrible. And, uh, some we've of got, the we've got to get, if you'll pardon the pun, to the bottom of it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've talked to some engineers about the McKnight Road situation. You had mentioned earlier to me about that. Um, the water after McKnight Road was built. The engineers uh, designed it in such a way that it would hold water uh, for some reason. There's water constantly on that road. And of course, this is one of the reasons uh, for these potholes, uh, for road erosion, not necessarily the potholes themselves. Uh, when you're using a lot of salt and there's a lot of water and the roads aren't properly sealed, uh, it doesn't take too much cold weather and then thawing to, to get the water underneath the surface and bring it to the top. And when you're out there, and Eleanor, I, I hope that you have no occasion to go out there. And speaking for the business community, that's a terrible thing to say. But if you go out, be very careful. But be aware of what's going on. Well, Jack, this is not uh, a problem that is yours exclusively. Um, we happened to go to dinner last weekend in a restaurant out on Route 19. Restaurant owner came over and uh, throwing his hands up in the air and he said, hey, my business is suffering. People are not coming out to dinner on weekends. It's bad enough Monday through Friday when you have to travel certain roads to go to work. But when you come home, you say, hey, I'm not going to abuse my car further. I'm not going to run the risk of another flat tire. And so there are businessmen, merchants throughout the area who are being affected by our road conditions. I guess, really, the, the only thing we can do is uh, get this information out to the viewers, hope that uh, people will be not just frustrated, uh, but that they will do something about it. Alan, I want to repeat your request that someone take a little, it doesn't have to be a fancy photograph, does it? Anything. Anything. A little Polaroid picture, exactly. a little brownie. Take a photograph of the pothole that has damaged your car and send it to Alan Frank. Alan, uh, <laughs> By the way, this is um, some of our ingenious uh, local work here. That uh, these, are, these are all real honest-to-goodness potholes, though. Uh, give us your address again, Alan. Plaza Building, Plaza Pittsburgh, Building. 15219. And uh, you also want a postcard. Postcard will, uh, if the postcard will tell us the location mm -hmm. of the pothole, from there I can identify the individual contracting company responsible for the hole. Okay, now, Jack, uh, if someone is suffering personal injury, uh, they can get in touch with you, or are you taking any calls on your hotline? We're taking calls all of the time. We've just changed our number out there uh, for expediency. We have two numbers now. The one that I would like them to call would be 366-8200, and that's at the North Hills Chamber of Commerce on Cumberland Road. 366-8200. And uh, is this a, uh, do they just get a recorded message? No, no, there's someone there to answer the phone. Okay, so someone will be there to, to uh, listen to their story. And I guess maybe if nothing else, uh, it uh, does one good to just get it off their chest. I mean, I know I, that's the way I feel. I have looked forward to this half hour for a long time because <laughs> uh, each morning I come in here like this, a nervous wreck. And, and really, we were talking, Alan, uh, uh, before we went on the air about the way people are driving as a result of this. I guess it's a human reflex. You see yourself coming to a, a pothole and you'll swerve into the other lane. It's amazing that there have not been more serious accidents, although I know that there have been thousands of accidents the direct result of the potholes. The low speed resulting from the pothole mm -hmm. is saving a lot of lives. You can't, drive, it or not. You can't drive faster than 20 miles an oh. hour. <laughs> I mean, there's just, uh, there's no way. I hurt my finger last night. The pothole jarred the steering wheel so hard. Well, I want to uh, thank both of you, and uh, we're going to uh, right now go out to Shadyside if we can get there without a pothole. Harriet Friedlander is standing by, and she has your daily horoscope for you. February 28th, Aries. Do your part to come to an understanding with someone today. Try to work in harmony. Taurus. Try to spend a quiet day. 
whom I need some time to think right now. Gemini. Make plans for a social event in the near, near future. Ask someone to help you. Cancer. Outside interests could conflict with your home responsibilities today. Decide which is most urgent. Leo. Keep your thinking clear today. Too much daydreaming can waste your time. Virgo. A foolish argument over finances can be avoided now. Be willing to compromise. Libra. Give a small gift to someone today. It can lift both your spirits. Scorpio. Do your work with renewed vigor now. You may see some very good results soon. Sagittarius. Get out and have some fun today. You may need a change of pace now. Capricorn. Spend some time with a member of the family now. Get to know his attitudes. Aquarius. A short trip can bring favorable results today. Go where you will feel welcome. Pisces. Buy yourself a birthday gift now. Get something you have wanted for a long time. Tomorrow on Good Day Pittsburgh, our special guest will be Anita Blyer. She's married to that fella named Rocky. Anita is going to be by with a fashion show, all for the benefit of muscular, di oh, multiple sclerosis, I beg your pardon. That's tomorrow, 10.30 to 11, right here on TV 53. Do join us. In the meantime, have a nice day. This has been Good Day Pittsburgh with Eleanor Shano White and Tom Peterson with news. Join us each weekday morning at 10.30 for a special blend of features and interviews on Good Day Pittsburgh.